Hello. Hi. How's it going? Awesome. That's why I'm here. And uh, so the whole the whole point of these streams are to get people more accustomed with the field I'm in. Yes, of course. Uh, I would like to wait a few more minutes if that's all right. Um, because uh, we usually start at 4 o'clock sharp. But let's just wait for a few more people to join in. And uh, then we can definitely get started. I hope that's all right. Oh, no, that's fine. That's all good. So what field are you guys in? Are you guys in the tech are you guys in the IT field or like is it the design field? Are you guys coders? Um, Hi. Hi, Naman. How are you? Hi, Ankar. Hi. How's it going? Um, I think it's it's four o'clock. Uh, I hi. How's it going? It's four o'clock. I see no reason why we shouldn't start. So I. Let's just get started. I'm just going to share my screen. Let me know when you guys can see it, OK? Can you guys see it? I'm assuming you can. OK, um, yes. Uh, let's get started then. Hello, everyone. So thank you so much for making it to the stream. Um, my name is. Pradyumna, I have, and for the past four years, I have worked as, as a designer and a production artist in the augmented reality and virtual reality industry. It's collectively called uh, immersive media. So that's AR, VR, and, uh, and other concepts such as projection mapping and also mixed reality, which is, which is, which is uh, the full form of MR. So, uh, so across the past four years, 
I have worked as a designer, uh, creating experiences for for uh, various companies to sh showcase uh, various products, and and I've also created, I've also designed and made experiences for uh, companies in order to create like you know training experiences. So what I mean by this is I have used virtual reality to create training experiences for uh, for the employees of a company. I'll speak more about it as we go. And in this session uh, that I, uh, I'm hosting today, I would like to introduce you guys to the concepts of AR, which is augmented reality, VR, which is virtual reality. I would like to speak about also you know, the metaverse and how AR and VR play a huge role in it. I would also like to speak about uh, user experience, which is which we call UX for short, and how and how UX plays a huge part in crafting these experiences that have become so famous in the past three four years. So um, so that's pretty much what we'll be speaking about in this session. I would first like to uh, start off with what exactly is augmented reality and what exactly is virtual reality. Let's start with augmented reality. I'm going to explain this with an example. It goes without saying. Uh, now, augmented reality is a virtual medium where uh, where the user is 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 still exposed to the real world. As you can see here, the user is is still able to see the world around him, but there is an added layer of information in the form of in the form of computer generated imagery, and this computer generated imagery could be in in terms of images, uh, two dimensional images. It could be in terms of three dimensional objects, as you can see here in this example. It could uh, be in terms of uh, it could be in terms of even animations as well so the both the two dimensional objects and the three dimensional objects you add on on to your view of the view of the real world those objects can have animations as well so now that's pretty much what augmented reality means and as i mentioned before the user is still connected to the real world he is still he or she or they are still able to see what's happening around them but there's just an added layer of information which is virtual now if i have to explain that with an example take a look at this application on the phone now this is so so what this app actually does is it essentially scans your feet and it projects a 3D model of a shoe of your choice. Now, say you're going shopping, you would like to know what this shoe looks like when you wear it. But at the same time, you aren't at a store. You are maybe sh shopping on your phone. You're going through maybe Amazon or Flipkart. I don't know. And you wanna, you like what the shoe looks. You like how the shoe looks, but you wanna know what it what it looks like on your feet. It helps you create a. a it helps you decide and create. A, I'm sorry. It helps you decide a more. A, it makes it. It helps you a, make a more informed your know, decision as to whether you whether you want to purchase it or not. And you have, and you have that option to actually see what it really looks like on your feet. So, augmented reality does allows you to do just that. You can see how, um, yeah. So you can see how the person using the phone here, they, yeah. So the moment they, uh, the moment the camera on their phone scans their feet, the shoe is the shoe appears over their feet, and it looks. It looks pretty convincing for something that doesn't really exist in in reality. So it really helps uh, 
purchasing the right products you know it helps you make the right you know decision can you talk about the companies in this line of work well the most the most um popular one is facebook or actually well in recent years it's it, they changed their name you know to meta so facebook or meta have been have have recently introduced you know the metaverse which is essentially an online platform um which is an online platform for people like you know to interact with each other across the world so what the metaverse really brings is you don't need to travel halfway across the world to meet someone you can use the internet to hold meetings with people across the world to go to live concerts so on and so forth so facebook is one company and yes you're absolutely right lenskart is another so now when you want to try a new specs you you just have to use your phone you have to have the app in it the camera on your phone scans your face and it projects it projects the the spectacle of your choice it's a great way to preview what that product will look like before you make the purchase and this has been this has become all the more relevant especially after covid when when it became very difficult for people to to physically travel to a store to purchase something this just made it safer and it just this was the perfect alternative and yes you're right uh, snapchat as well snapchat you you have these ar filters these ar filters which you know they they have all sorts of uh, filters that can be applied like you know to your face you, you could have a hat on your head you could you could put makeup we we all we all uh, used it at some point or the other yes so companies like facebook which is which owns like you know, snapchat yes if i'm not mistaken yes uh um uh, uh facebook uh we have lenskart we have uh, there are so many companies actually there are plenty of automobile companies as well also bmw if i'm not mistaken also have use augmented reality to show what the car will look like in the real world and uh, and i too have had the pleasure of making similar experiences where the project brief was that the client has asked us to showcase their their product it could be an appliance it could be an automobile we had to create an an experience in augmented reality where we spawn the 3d model in the real world space it was a lot of fun but that's just a little introduction on our, on augmented reality let's move on to um virtual reality now virtual reality is excuse me i'm going to mute it virtual reality is essentially an immersive medium where unlike in augmented reality where you can still see the real world surroundings in virtual reality you are completely cut off from the real world your your view of the of the real world around you is completely occluded and you are for a lack of a better word transported into a virtual environment which is fully computer generated now i unfortunately don't have a headset anymore but uh, this is an example of what you could see in a vr experience a virtual reality experience this is a roller coaster experience so the user is transported into a fully computer generated environment and uh, you can see how it's and believe me it, uh, it may not look it may not feel uh, realistic when you view it through your screen through your laptop screen or your phone but believe me the moment you put on a headset the moment the anxiety also it all feels real it's like and that's the whole point of a virtual reality experience 
the user is transported into a virtual world and the whole and what makes an experience successful is how real it feels if you feel all that you feel all that you would feel in an actual amusement park riding a roller coaster then the experience is a success so uh, so as i mentioned unlike virtual uh, i'm sorry unlike augmented reality you are fully immersed using a virtual reality headset so for those of you who haven't seen what a headset looks like um, this is essentially what it looks like so the users view of the outside world is completely occluded and in many cases they are the they aren't able to hear much of what happens in the real world because certain experiences also use sound as a way to create uh, immersive experiences so um yeah so that's essentially what virtual reality and augmented reality is now uh, now if i have to compare the two i would say virtual reality is a lot more immersive because you are transported into a virtual world and you are you are you are kept away from the real world so your focus will be on the world you are in whereas in augmented reality which is a lot more accessible also but at the same time it is not as immersive because it is just a few more layers of information it is very useful and it is being used to a large scale especially in the past few years particularly in the uh, but particularly in the uh, e-commerce field and uh, but yes uh, between the two of them vr is a lot more immersive yes vr headsets are costly well it depends on what vr headset you are you are trying to purchase now uh, there are there are mainly predominantly two types of uh, vr headsets you have your tethered or your pc vr headsets which are the more expensive ones they are more expensive because because of the visual quality they provide in the experiences the quality is almost photorealistic it feels real and there's a lot more possible in terms of features now when it comes to stand alone headsets like for example if you have heard of the oculus quest an oculus quest does not require additional components like your uh, sensors or it, it it does not use any cables unless you're charging it of course um the oculus quest is a standalone headset which you can move around anywhere you want and it is the more feasible one because it's just easier to like at least in my personal experience even though the visual quality isn't as great as a pc vr or a tethered um, headset it is still more used and and my clients prefer a standalone headset where they don't have to connect anything to the computer they prefer that we create experiences using standalone headsets like the oculus quest and so on and so forth so yes uh, but in recent times vr headsets have become a lot more affordable now if i'm not mistaken the oculus quest which is the first version the oculus quest 1 costs only 30000 if i'm not mistaken i believe on amazon if you go to amazon you can get the entire uh entire development kit the i'm sorry the entire headset along with the remotes and the cables you can get it for 30000 the quest the second version of the quest is a little higher because the quality of the graphics are a lot more and there are a lot more features that costs about 45 to 50000 if i'm not mistaken so it also depends on how much space you want in the memory card so uh, i get i guess there's the you can get headsets for 64 gb space and 128 gb space which company do uh, i work at i i well i 
no longer work at the company. Um, I used to work at a company called Autoverse. It is a Bangalore-based AR VR startup. So for the past, so uh, the company had was started in the year 2016, if I'm not mistaken. It uh, and ever since then, uh, we have been responsible for creating experiences for clients in the medium of AR and VR. We have also created many interactive applications on the web. Auto worse. I'm gonna. I'm gonna actually type it out. Um, I will share the. Let me just share the website. Yes, here we are. You should definitely check out workout. It is, and I'm not being you know partial, but we are one. I mean, we are one of one of like you know the best companies in India, and we uh, other freelancers in the space too. Yes, you can. Uh, you can um, work as a freelancer. I personally have predominantly worked as a full-time employee. So I worked there as, uh, I worked there as, uh, well, I joined as a junior artist, a junior 3D artist. I got promoted to a senior designer and, and my final role was leading the production art team of the company. I was the art leader at Outdoors. So my responsibility was making sure that the quality of the experiences that we make are, are maintained and we follow specific processes to make these experiences across both AR and VR. Um, what are the three biggest skills for designing for AR and VR experiences? Well, first of all, it helps if you, if you have a design background you you need to have basic design skills such as you need to you need to be able to understand space you need to know how space works so now personally i have pursued an undergraduate as an architect so during my course uh, as an architecture student i learned how to create spaces how to create spaces that work logical spaces i learned about color theory, I learned about color harmonies. I learned about what colors work with what. You need to, you need to know color theory. You need to understand sound design as well. You need to know how it works. You need to know, uh, you need to know when to use it. Um, you also need to, it helps to uh, have a clear idea about creating user experiences. Now, when I say user experience, I was going to come to this anyways. A user experience designer is somebody who designs an entire application or an experience. Let's just for the sake of this conversation, let's call all of these things experiences. Uh, a, a user experience designer, his, his or her or their job is to basically um, is to essentially decide what the flow of the entire experience is from the moment the user puts on the headset to the moment to the final moment where they take it off. How does the experience start? What is the first first uh, action or interaction that the user is supposed to do? Where are they supposed to move? All of that. So you you would have seen. Uh, so this is not just for AR and VR. This is also for also applications on the on that you would see on your phones. Like if you look at any app you're using in order to make these apps, like for example, Zomato or Swiggy, or if you're using a banking app or a payment app like Google Pay or Paytm or whatever, each of them needed uh, where created the flow or the entire sequence of the entire app how how and what happens when you click on a button all that was decided by a ux designer it was their job to make sure that the flow was clear and it was easy for people to use it 
So uh, let me give an example of that. So recently I designed uh, an interactive web experience where we had to showcase a camera product for Godrej. So my job was to design what the entire flow was. What happens when the user clicks on any one of the cameras? How clear is it for a first time user to navigate through this entire experience? What happens if I click on this particular button? What happens if I click on this? It shows me, it gives me a hint on what I'm supposed to do. How, what, what kind of colors am I using in this, in this experience? What kind of font am I using? What, how, how am I showing the information or the various features? Now keep in mind, this is product showcasing. The idea here is to excite the user about an experience. So I need to, I need to decide how much information do I show them and Personally, for me, my approach to this is to use 3D design to make it as as interesting and interactive. So I used a lot of effects. I used, I used a lot of animation. I made sure that I create a, this very homely backdrop for this entire scene. So that's pretty much the job of a, U, of a UX designer. Their job is to... Um, is to decide the flow of the experience and and oversee the general aesthetic of the whole experience. Um, can AR and VR be combined together uh, in one single? Uh, well, you well we have applications which are capable of you know doing that. The, you have options where you can view things in AR. A single application can view a space in AR and in VR as well. But it but keep in mind we are trying to integrate two complex media. And in order to do that, it it takes a lot of effort and we need to make sure it runs on also all devices. It is feasible. But I believe it is I I believe a single application can have both features. Um, is it easy to integrate VR in a website? Yes, it is. And people have actually done it before. Uh, have you guys heard of Mozilla Hubs? I'm going to share that link here. Mozilla Hubs is a platform for M Mozilla users where you are essentially, so you have the freedom to, to meet, meet people. You can hold office meetings. You can hold recreational activities and you can view this on your laptop. That's one way to do it. You can also view it on a headset as well. You can actually be in that virtual space. Let me see if there's uh, an example. I'll... So my, so the company that I used to work at, um, So here, as you can see, all these people are actual human beings who are using their headsets or would have been also operating and using their laptop. They've all been, they're all meeting up in a virtual space. So, so you can create your own avatars based on how you would like to look. You can speak to people and I mean actually speak to people. You don't have to type or chat. You can also do that, but it's so much easier, like you know, to just speak to them. You can make, you can move around the space. You can create your own worlds. So these are all virtual worlds which you can enter and and exist in. You know. Um, so yes. So to answer your question, yes, it has been has been integrated in a website. Also, what are all the software you know for AR? Well. So it depends on what work you're doing. Me, I'm a designer and an artist. So the kind of software that I need to learn is, is more oriented towards art and also design. 
if you're if you're a coder or a developer you have to know how to code you know how you have to know how to code a particular language you have to know how to code c sharp c c plus plus python also if i'm not mistaken there are so many languages that are compatible for creating experiences in immersive media but to but personally for me as a designer i have to learn a lot of 3d modeling softwares i have to learn a lot of animation softwares i have to learn also 2d uh, well softwares like figma that help me create ui and that also help me flesh out the ux of an experience so it depends on what your requirement is and you also need to know how to operate game engines as well when i say game engines game engines are softwares that are used to create the final experience in ar or vr we are speaking about examples such as unreal engine you would have seen a couple of streams on creator club where certain creators made experiences using unreal engine so unreal engine unity these two other two main game engines that are actually dominating the industry but th there are also a few other more which have also gained momentum what are the trends uh, what are the trends will vr technology bring in the near future well first of all uh, i believe it is going to affect retail and e-commerce like so keep in mind uh, let's just show an example um yeah so this is an experience where the user uses an augmented reality device to sh shop so as i mentioned earlier augmented reality is merely adding an extra layer of information onto your view of the entire world now as you can see here the person opens up their their refrigerator and it scans the entire refrigerator the whatever device they'll be using it will have a camera which will scan the entire refrigerator and it will and it will and it will essentially infer that um you you are low on milk so you will be reminded to go shopping for it next as you're walking through the aisle of a supermarket that extra layer of information will show you what exactly you're looking at without having to go all the way there there's already a piece of information which shows up saying that this is shampoo it also speaks about what kind of shampoo it is as you move forward it shows oh there's also moisturizers there you may not notice all these things without ar you would you would have just moved right past it without realizing that's exactly what you're looking for ar adds that extra layer of information that allows you to um to uh it just makes life easier it just makes your everyday life easier now this is for the everyday consumer if you are talking about um and yes as i sh showed earlier for consumers um ar has become a very popular in recent years all the more than vr because it's more accessible because ar can be viewed through a simple smartphone you don't need to purchase a separate headset for it provided you have a a fairly decent smartphone which supports ar make sure uh, that it supports a software called ar core ar core if it has ar code that means you can view things in ar if not you just have to get a new phone um and yes as far as trends go it's going to change like the retail industry it is going to change uh, it's 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 going to be applied in all facets of life uh it'll it can be used for education it can make uh, experiences more interactive for kids to learn let's let me show you an example
So, uh, for example, so here, AR can be used to to used as a story telling method to make more interactive stories. What I mean by this is you can create an application where instead of just simply reading from a book and expecting a kid like you know to visualize what things look like, they can see it in motion. All they have to do is they they can they can either use a tablet or they can even use their phone and they can just see the whole story play out in front of them. So it's and this as I mentioned now can be applied for education as well. It can add that added I mean it can add that extra layer of information for people to understand how things work. Say you want to assemble a piece of furniture that you would have purchased from IKEA. You can use an app. I don't know if they have it, but you but I'm just like proposing an idea. What if you had an app which actually shows which actually shows a 3D representation of what the final furniture is supposed to look like? It shows it as an animation. It shows exactly where you have to fix what. It makes the entire process so much easier. So yes, so it can so it is used in the commerce industry. It can be used for a uh, Retail, it can be used for education, it can be used for also recreation as well. You can play a lot of games using AR. The most popular one you guys would know is Pokemon Go, which was one of the first successful AR applications. Now, keep in mind that the user is st still has access to the world around them, but these, the Pokemon are computer generated and they they appear as they appear at various locations around your locality. So yeah, so plenty of applications. The difference between C4D and Blender. Well, first of all, C4D, or for those of you who don't know, it's uh, short for Cinema 4D. Cinema 4D is and Blender are both. 3D modeling applications. They allow you to 3D model objects. They allow you to apply materials on objects. They allow you to animate objects. They allow you to uh, simulate real world physics on these objects. Uh, and when I say real world physics, I mean gravity and all that. You can do all of that. Cinema 4D is a bit more of an industry when it was uh, the preferred software over Blender. But in recent years, the quality that you get from Blender is, is on par with the quality that you would get if you worked with Cinema 4D. Now, um, and what I mean by this is you're capable of doing whatever you can uh, in Cinema 4D using Blender. The only difference is maybe I think a few features like particle, if, like the high end particle effects, I'm not too sure about this, but I believe a few features here and there are not available in Blender. But uh, in my eyes, uh, both are equally good, but what makes Blender the better software is it's free. It's hundred percent free. Cinema 4D, you have a trial version for which which lasts for about which lasts for almost a month if I'm not mistaken. But Blender has been free and will always be free, no matter what. Uh, in a uh, in AR and VR design, do we require coding? Well. To design experiences, um, it helps to understand how things work, work from a developer's perspective. You need to know what is possible from the coding side. So keep in mind, as a designer, you have a free, you have the freedom to come up with crazy ideas. 
the the options are limitless but the problem is bringing those crazy ideas to life you know certain certain effects may not work certain animations may not work because it's just not possible for that hardware to handle it so it is not mandatory for someone to know coding it certainly helps it helps a lot if you if you are a designer and you if you know how to code that makes me very jealous of you like it is a skill it is a very rare skill you know to have and and i do plan to learn eventually i do plan to learn to code eventually but yes it helps but is it is not ma mandatory what you need to have as a designer is you need to have you need to have basic knowledge of how to design you need to know how to design spaces you need to know how to apply the right color combinations for your environments you need to know how the ux of an application works you need to know you need to understand the user you need to know what the user wants and the idea as a ux designer is to make the whole process of using the whole act of using an application as as effortless as possible you, your job is to eliminate the learning curve it should be that easy that the user is not intimidated by the software or application and they are able to use it comfortably within a couple of minutes that is what makes you a good ux designer um yeah so uh, as i was saying um yes I, I think we spoke about vr and we also spoke about its implications we spoke about like you know the metaverse and as i was saying right the metaverse is this online virtual platform where you can you can start a business you can uh, meet new people you can play games you can so i heard recently that a couple got married on the metaverse so the entire wedding was in a virtual environment which is amazing like it's like a, a, i mean well, why not right if it's if that kind of like you know technology is feasible i don't see why people shouldn't make the most out of it uh yeah so um yeah so that being said um yes for the metaverse and ar and vr are going to play a huge role in that so and i'm talking about using virtual reality to fully immerse yourself in a virtual space to to be able to move around the space and when i say move it's not just being in vr is not about um you know it's not about uh just being able to walk around or also teleport you are able to fly around as well so keep in mind being in vr is kind of like being in the matrix i'm pretty sure most of you have already seen it and and you know how certain people in the matrix can fly they can jump great heights all that is possible in virtual reality it just needs to be coded that's all so the possibilities of vr are endless you can host movies and also in virtual reality and what i mean by this is let's see let's i would like to show you guys an example instead of just simply talking about it so what i mean by uh what i mean by this is um instead of uh, i can't find an example at the moment but uh, what i mean by this is instead of uh, just watching the movie from your screen you are actually a spectator in that virtual space like you are able to see and maybe even also interact with the characters of the story so um you are able to move around you are able to speak to people and you are in fact involved in the in the entire you you are in fact involved in the story you are part of the the script and all the actions you do 
they 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 determine the final outcome of the story so all that so it has applications yes it is it is possible i'm assuming you're referring to being able to place yourself in the movie right to actually participate in the movie is that what you're speaking about if so yes it is and oculus has made a movie i believe it's called um, I believe it's called Henry, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so Henry is a VR experience where, so this is, yeah, so this is a, this is a recording of a user actually playing a part in this story. And uh, I'll share a link to this. I mean, I'll share this link. Yeah, so that that's, it is amazing. That is the next stage of being able to watch a movie. You are no longer, you are no longer a spectator. You are part of the story. And same goes also games as well. Um, say you are playing an FPS. I'm just going to. Um, so this is a beautiful game called Robo Recall. Um, so here, um, show. So the user is actually in this virtual environment, and the story of this game is the entire uh, the entire planet is taken over by artificial intelligence. So this artificial intelligence applies to all the robots that were supposed to actually help humanity, but instead of helping humanity, uh, they they sort of like you know decided. To enslave them. So, you, so your job, as as a as the protagonist of the story, is to make sure all the evil robots are decommissioned. So, this this is an FPS. Um, let me just skip to the gameplay. So, you see how you can <laughs> you are you are so the input is done through the controllers. You can actually you can actually like you know remove things off you can throw the heads of the robot around and let's actually get into the actual gameplay where you where, where you actually have to kill the robots see how you can you 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 can essentially teleport around you can hold these you can like throw stuff at these robots you can shoot them you can you can also grab them hit them with like you know the dismembered uh, limbs so on and so forth. It's a really fun game. I'll also post the link for this so that you, so uh, anyone who's interested can. Uh... So the applications are endless. There's so much we can do with it. Um, so moving on. Uh, yeah, so the plan for the metaverse is to sort of make everything virtual. We have our stores. We have um, our uh, we have our we have we organize all our recreational activities in virtual space without having to leave our room and and also and if you're wondering what happens to the health of the person or the fitness of the person there are applications which um what do you say uh there are applications that actually make you do exercise so there are there are actually games which like for example this is a game called game called uh, beat saber where you are supposed to essentially you have to move in a way that you don't hit any obstacles but you always hit each of the cubes which are moving like you know towards you with the respective saber so you have you have your blue cubes you and you have your red cubes your job is to hit make sure you hit each and every one of them at the same time uh, at the same time, also avoid all the obstacles. Uh, but what makes this so interesting is they play a really catchy song or a catchy beat, and you're supposed to you're supposed to hit these cubes based on the, the beat of like you know this song. So it it's a really cool game for those of you who haven't tried it. Um, yeah, so. What else? 
yeah so that's pretty much what the metaverse is going to be like and a lot of a lot of companies have begun to employ the use of ar and vr because it just helps sell their product much better and it reaches a larger audience it's also a lot more economical so now say you're trying to sell a product instead of spending loads and loads on advertisements and also billboards and all that which also works i'm not saying it doesn't work people get a more more intimate experience when they have the freedom to actually be transported into a space where they and actually view the object they can they can walk around it they can interact with it say you're selling a washing machine the user can let me just uh, show an experience that we did a very long time back um give me one second there uh i don't think i so one second i i will sh sh show that in a bit i don't think it's there right now uh but uh what i mean by this is let's let's actually just give an example so um what i mean to say is oh yes this is what i was looking for this is the company that i used to work at and in i believe we made this experience in 2019 late 2019 where we had to showcase a new washing machine a front load washing machine for the company ifb so the so this is a screen recording of the entire experience so the user is spawned in to this utility room they are asked to select what kind of clothes they would like to clean so they have selected the daily wear now the now they have they have ui which shows you all the features now keep in mind you can't really read what is on the washing machine for the sake of like you know resolution issues so as a ux uh, designer it is your job to amplify what those features are magnify them so that's exactly what's happening here and you choose a particular kind of wash cycle um and then you place all the all your laundry inside you close it then you you, you can also move in move forward and you're essentially inside the washing machine so the reason why we sort of shrink the person and and uh, teleport them inside the washing machine is so that you know how things work there is nothing about the product is hidden there's full transparency you know how the how the water flows what kind of features the new model is using and how it cleans all the stains and all the dirt so so creating experiences like this sort of brings the customer closer to the product you know how things work now and of course we try and make our experiences as interesting as possible so we sort of uh we sort of add a lot of animations it shows how the uh various mechanisms clean all the dirt and uh, yeah it shows you through visual effects and animation how the dirt is cleaned through the through the wash cycle so here we sort of actually gamified the experience where in order to clean all the dirt and stains the user had to throw a throw a kind of a projectile like you know towards it and wherever it lands it will remove all the dirt from there so yeah so you can see how it how the user th throws it and it falls on the surface and you see how it like you know gets destroyed but uh, yeah so this is how we can use vr um yes that's 
pretty much it. Um, what I would also like to speak about next is when what the certain things that a UX designer needs to keep in mind when creating experiences. Now, keep in mind, uh, since we are creating experiences in VR, virtual reality, we no longer have to worry about uh, interacting with the application using a mouse or a keyboard. We are, in fact, in that virtual space. And as you can see here, all these interactions were done. And you would have seen in also Robo Recall all the interactions, the way they shoot things, the way they shoot at things, the way they grab things in the environment, all that can, can be either done through controllers, which are usually given with the headset. And there's also hand tracking as well. What I mean by hand tracking is, let me show you an example. Um, you can use your hands. So your hands will appear like this. And you can, in fact, interact with, like here, they're interacting with the keypad. You can just use your fingers. So basically, the headset, the sensors on the headset, they basically scan your hands and they show it in virtual space where you, you can interact with the objects, in it, which is a lot more intuitive and a lot more organic than using a controller. It just feels a lot more real and a lot more immersive. Another way that you can interact with objects is by through what we call a gaze input. It's called a gaze input. So you, if you look at, if you look at an object for maybe a little over one second, it interacts with it. So the advantage of this kind of input or this method of interaction. You don't need to use your controllers. You don't need even need to you use your hands. But it is a lot less like you know rewarding and feels a lot less immersive, and it's also a little slower in terms of feedback. So uh, yeah, so these are the three common methods in which you can interact in a virtual space. One is using using a controller. The next one is using your eyes and focusing on a particular object in virtual space. Last one is through hands, like. You're literally using your hands. So that's so that's so, so this is what makes this is what sets VR apart from traditional you know devices. Uh, is everyone on board with this? Any anyone have any questions? Anything like that? Anything you would like to ask me? Did, did you guys understand this? If so, we can move on. No more questions. Okay, cool. Let's move on. Uh, next is yes. I was I was speaking about what one needs to keep in mind uh, when creating experiences in VR. Now, uh, for a show of hands, I'd like to know who is a UI UX designer here, just so that we can establish some context and just so that we know exactly. Are there no designers here? Any developers? Any anyone who who likes to code? Anybody? Okay, that's fine. Uh, I'll I'll just go on explaining, and if you guys have any doubts, please don't hesitate. So, as a UX designer for VR, the first thing that you need to do is you need to realize that you are not you are not like you are not limited to a single screen size. You're not creating experience for a particular screen size. You're creating experience for the for the user itself. The user, when I say this, you 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 are creating a virtual world around him, around them. So, create the experience in a way that it feels you use all all fields of view around them. Don't just add information in one particular view. Keep in mind that you have the entire environment around you. You can place UI wherever you want, as long as it makes sense and as long as it serves the purpose. The next thing is now when we create UI for um, traditional applications like on the laptop or on the phone, we don't have to worry much about the spacing of buttons or icons. 
keep in mind that when we design for uh, a virtual reality experience, keep in mind that you are in fact in that virtual space and you might be using your controllers, you could be using your hands to click on objects to interact with them, like what's happening over here. You know, um, I think with, it's not that. Yes, here it is. You see how the user has a UI panel on their wrist and the user uses their hands to interact with a particular button and enable a particular feature. Now keep in mind, it's very important to space your, your UI elements out. Now, the reason why I say this is if you're using a hand, maybe it's a little easier and you can in fact space the buttons a lot closer but if you're using your controller, keep in mind, it's going to, it is going to detect the entire profile of the controller. And sometimes you might end up clicking on the wrong button, which would have been right next to the one that you wanted to click. So in cases like this, make sure the UI is spaced out a significant amount. I believe in terms of real world units, the UIs should be spaced out at least, um, at least one and a half to two, centimeters to avoid any kind of, uh, uh, what do you say, issue with clicking the right button. So space it out at least one and a half to two centimeters apart. All your, you, all, all your buttons, you know, is what I'm saying. Next thing is you might have noticed there's also, you know, text in on the UI when creating a word in when you're in a virtual environment. Keep in mind the resolution that you see in a virtual space is not as 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 photorealistic or as high resolution as what we see through our own eyes in the real world. So certain certain like you know pieces of information or text may not be readable because of the limitations of that particular device. So always make sure that the size of your fonts are large enough. They are so that the user, when in that virtual space, even if the even if the even if like you know the resolution of what you see, what your virtual environment is low, you can still read it. And particularly for text, and particularly for also lowercase like you know text, if there's a lot of uh, if if there's a lot like you know to read, it becomes an issue. So make sure like, you know, your texts are short and concise and only when required, make sure that you, uh, I, you can use a paragraph or you can write a paragraph, but if so, make sure it's clearly visible, which comes to my next point, always prototype and also test what your application is looking like before you hand it off. As a designer, I cannot stress this enough. You have to, you have to, you, you, ha you have to own a headset. When you're working, when you're creating experience with VR, you have to have a headset. You, you, you need to use it as many times as possible. Whatever changes you make in the design, you change the font, you need to test what it looks like in the experience. You need to know that it is clear enough for the user to read. If it is not clear, you have to change it right away. Um, yeah, so, <clears throat> and, uh, what else, what else does one need to keep in mind? And when you're in, when, when you're, when you're, you know, giving instructions in VR, so VR uses, uh, audio, the instructions can be given to the person through audio. The instructions can be given to the person through, through, you know, text as well through imagery, use all of these simultaneously. I cannot stress this enough because keep in mind, there are users who may not, who would not have heard what the audio, what the audio had asked them like, you know, to do. So they would end up like, you know, relying on the imagery and animations be very clear say you want a, you want a user to perform a particular action, show them how to do that. Show it right in front of them. 
if I take an example here, the, the instruction is fit both your hands into the outline. It's so clear and make a pinch in a gesture. Now, if that image was not there of the profile of a hand, the user wouldn't know exactly how they have to make it. There are plenty of ways in which you can make that particular gesture, but be very clear as to exactly how they're supposed to do it. You have to, uh, you have to position your hands like this, bring it forward, and once they do it right, make sure you give a, uh, uh, make sure you reward them by giving feedback for doing the correct answer. Even if you do it wrong, make sure you give a feedback for that because. It, it's very important for the experience and all the, the interactions to have uh, have enough feedback when doing a particular action. So uh, it, it, it sort of it sort of enhances the experience and it sort of motivates the user to explore more. It's very important for them to and. And it also makes the experience a lot more also realistic. What I mean by this is, uh, you see here, the person is clicking on a button. Now, if the button was not pushed inward, it sort of it sort of like you know, disorients the, the user because in real life, when you when you press a button, it's supposed to move inside, right? That's exactly what has to happen in VR, and I was speaking about feedback. Uh, the moment you click something, that the ramifications of that action have to show instantly. The response to your actions have to be very, very instant and have to be obvious. And that is what makes an experience, uh, what do you say, effective. Um, then much like in traditional UI, make sure that the UI that you create is prominent and is also easily readable. Make sure there's enough contrast between the virtual environment and the UI that you're making, because keep in mind, the UI is very important for you to navigate through the experience and it, and it has to be obvious for the user. The user has to know where they can access it. Um, what else? And yes, when making UI, make, make the UI very compact. Now keep in mind as a UX designer, you are designing an experience. Your experience should make the most out of the virtual environment around them. And keep in mind when, when like, when, you know, deciding how much UI you need in the experience, be very frugal and and keep it very minimalistic. Do not overpopulate your screen with UI, 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 UI here and there. That's not going to work because it will also take away from the immersion. It might get very crowded and very chaotic. So like this example here, they want to open a menu. The way they do it is if they flip their palm, a button appears. Then they click on that. Then the main UI, uh, the main menu UI appears. But if, but, but, you see how it is not always the main menu UI is not perpetually in the space. It only appears only when you want it, you know, to appear. And you have the freedom to close it as well. You might have seen, noticed the X button there. The idea here is to be minimalistic, be elegant, choose the right color harmonies, create a smooth experience, a very easy flow in which the user knows exactly what to do the moment they're asked to do that. And also when creating 3D environments, make sure that you, you showcase the environment in all its glory. As I said before, don't overpopulate your view with UI. You know. Have the option to expand more but also learn to appreciate the environment that you're making and learn and make sure that the user also appreciates it. Um, yeah, so I, I, I think that's, this is just what 
this was just a brief introduction about the marvel of ar vr and like you know the metaverse i just the whole idea was was to get you guys uh, to uh, introduce you guys to uh, this field and uh, and i believe the future seems very bright for the medium of ar and vr there's a lot more that can be made i think we are still in the infancy of this field you know this of this medium there's so much more yet to uh, yet to learn from this field and and personally for me i i did not receive any formal training at the university i graduated as an architect all i knew was how to design spaces and how to make art but through the job i learned so much i just learned the way the best way to learn is through experimentation and and also interact with as many people in the field as you can and i would say the one of the best platforms is also linkedin linkedin reddit instagram and also discord as well so you can actually you have the freedom to meet professionals in the industry you have the freedom to attend uh, like your conferences virtual conferences also youtube as well is a great way to learn about the art and to learn about like the art of ar and vr um but yeah that's all i wanted to speak about thank you so much for joining me everyone i i hope you guys learned uh learn something from the stream um if you guys have any more questions please don't hesitate to follow me on social media please don't hesitate to uh, um, message me uh, the details of my social media are are available in my profile i'm more than happy to help uh, to help you guys with whatever doubts you have or if there's or if there's anything more you would like to learn about the field so uh, that being said yes thank you so much everyone i uh, and uh, have a nice day bye can you share your linkedin profile yes definitely uh, give me a second okay so yeah i am most active on instagram and linkedin please don't hesitate to uh, ask me anything anything at all i'm here to help Yes. So, is there anything else you guys would like to ask, or I'll just I will end this stream then if there are no more questions. Okay, then I'll take that as a yes. Thank you so much, everyone, and have a lovely weekend. See you. Cheers.